son, a boy they named Ishmael. They were so excited they finally had their baby. God said, that is not the promised child. That's the arm of the flesh. That's something you made happen. Ishmael, in one sense, was considered a mistake. He was the child that Abraham had out of wedlock. Now, Abraham is the father of our faith. You would think he would know better. Surely this wouldn't be in the plan of God. Four generations later, when Joseph's brothers threw him into a pit, they were going to leave him there to die, but they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming. They decided instead to sell Joseph to them. The Ishmaelites were descendants of Ishmael. What once was considered a mistake was actually a part of God's plan to save Joseph's life. Only God in his amazing wisdom can take what was a mistake in one generation and use it to be a blessing in another generation. Nothing randomly happens. Even your mistakes are a setup. Why don't you quit beating yourself up for past failures? Quit living in regrets. Nothing you've done is too much for the mercy of God. Let that go. Start moving forward into the new things God has in store. A few years ago, Victoria lost her ring. It was a diamond band that her mother had given her, been in their family for several generations. Sometimes when we go on a trip, Victoria would hide it in the house. So for months, we searched everywhere. Every drawer, every cabinet, every pocket, that ring was nowhere to be found. About three years later, we were driving home late one night from out of town. It was after midnight. I was tired, ready to get home. Victoria said, Joel, you better slow down. You're going to get a ticket. I was going about 75. The speed limit was 65, maybe 55. But there was nobody on the highway. Wide open, way out in the country. All of a sudden, in my rearview mirror, I saw those flashing red lights. The officer came up to my window. I handed him my driver's license. He said, I'll need your insurance card as well. Victoria opened the glove compartment and started looking. She found every document except our insurance. She ended up pulling everything out of the glove compartment, digging around in the back, maneuvering her hand here and there. It's dark. You couldn't see anything. Plus, having the officer standing right there was nerve-wracking. At one point, Victoria, digging way back there, found something hard down in the crack. She kept digging and digging, pulled it out. It was the ring she had been looking for for three and a half years. She was so excited, so happy. She's over there rejoicing. Here, I was about to go to jail. She ended up finding the insurance card right on the top. It was like God caused her to overlook it. I handed it to the officer. He said, are you that minister? I said, I am. He said, if I come to your church, will you save me a seat? I said, I'll save you a whole section. <laughs> he handed it back and said, have a great night. Sometimes what we think is a setback is really God setting us up to do something amazing. Even mistakes we make, God knows how to turn them and use them for our good. A few days before Jesus was crucified, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane late one night praying. He was so overwhelmed with the weight of what he was about to do and under so much pressure that he sweat great drops of blood. He said, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, but not my will, let your will be done. We celebrate what Christ did on the cross. That's the foundation of our faith. But the real battle took place in the garden. This is where he made the decision, even though it's not fair, even though Judas is about to betray me, even though these people have mocked and ridiculed me, Father, I trust you. I know it's all a part of your plan. We all have these times when life isn't fair. Somebody's come against you. You're fighting an illness. Business is slowed down. This is where you have to do like him and say, God, I don't understand it, but I trust you. I know you're in control. You wouldn't have allowed it if it wasn't going to work for my good. Don't get discouraged when life doesn't make sense. God is up to something. 
They crucified Jesus, put him in the grave. They thought he was done, but you know the story. On the third day, Jesus came out, said, I am alive forevermore. God has the final say. What looks like a setback is really setting you up for the next level of your destiny. Jesus told his disciples, take up your cross and follow me. Sometimes we hear that and think, that's going to be a heavy burden. People told me growing up, Joel, it's a hard thing to carry your cross. One day my father had a dream. He was going through a difficult time in life. In this dream, he looked over and saw a large cross on the ground. It's made out of railroad ties, about 15 feet long. It looked like it weighed hundreds of pounds. He knew that was his cross to carry, but he didn't know how he could do it. It seemed overwhelming. He walked over to pick it up, but it wasn't what he thought. When he lifted it, it was like styrofoam. It hardly weighed anything. He was so amazed, he could easily put it on his shoulder and start walking. A few steps later, the cross started lifting him up. Instead of him carrying the cross, the cross was carrying him. When you take up your cross, it doesn't mean you're not going to have difficulties. People won't betray you. You'll never make mistakes. Life will happen. But the beauty is, when you should be overwhelmed, the cross will start carrying you. God will give you joy, peace, and strength that will lift you, help you make it through things that should have stopped you. We can all look back and see times where if it wasn't for the goodness of God, we wouldn't have made it. What is that? The cross carrying you. It looked like it's going to be heavy, but it was a setup. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Why don't you come back to that place of peace? Nothing in your life has randomly happened. God has ordered your steps. You may not understand it, but your life is divinely orchestrated. What God has purposed for you will come to pass. Now, I believe and declare every force that's trying to stop you is being broken. God is about to turn things in your favor. It looks like a setback, but it's setting you up for new levels, for promotion, for healing, for breakthroughs, for the fullness of your destiny in Jesus' name. And if you receive it, can you say amen today? I'd like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me? Just say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. Get in a good Bible-based church. Keep God in first place. If you'd like a copy of this message, just go to joelosteen.com and search for message number 762. That's message 762. Find it. How to get 5,000 felt. Hey, by Joel. Every Saturday and Sunday, God is faithful. Joel and Victoria Osteen invite you to experience Lakewood Church Live. Get ready for healing, promotion, breakthrough. Saturday at 8 p.m. East, 5 p.m. West. And Sundays at 9.30 a.m., noon, 3 and 8 p.m. East. Your Heavenly Father has given you everything you need to fulfill your purpose. Right here on Joel Osteen Radio, Sirius XM 128, or on the Sirius XM app. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get...
to get discouraged and think it's never going to happen. But God doesn't promise something and then change his mind. He doesn't put a dream in your heart and then take it back. What he starts, he finishes. You're still going to get there. That's the next message here on Joel Osteen Radio. Stay tuned to the end of the broadcast. I'll tell you how you can get a copy of this message along with other helpful resources from Joel and Victoria. And now, here's Joel with his message, You're Still Going to Get There, exclusively here on Joel Osteen Radio. Well, God bless you. It's a joy to come into your homes. And if you're ever in our area, please stop by and be a part of one of our services. I promise you, we will make you feel right at home. But I like to start with something funny, and I heard about this group of school children. They were in the cafeteria line at their Catholic elementary school. At the start of the line, there was a big bowl of apples. A nun had written a note. It said, take only one, God is watching. At the end of the line, there was a big bowl of chocolate chip cookies. One of the children had written a note. It said, take all you want. God is watching the apples. Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I want to talk to you today about you're still going to make it. We all have dreams and goals, things we know that God has promised us. We start off excited, we're sailing along fine, making progress, then a storm arises, an unexpected challenge, a sickness, a breakup, we lose a loved one, a contract we were counting on doesn't go through. It's easy to get discouraged and think it's never going to happen. But God doesn't promise something and then change his mind. He doesn't put a dream in your heart and then take it back. What he starts, he finishes. You may not see a way, but God hasn't run out of options. We think natural, but God is supernatural. He has ways we've never thought of. And God wouldn't have allowed that storm if it was going to keep you from your destiny. If that bad break, that loss, that person that walked away, if that was going to stop your purpose, God would have kept it from happening. And we may not like it, but it's a part of the process. Storms come to us all. The good news is God is in control of the winds. He's in control of what's trying to stop you. And all he has to do is shift the winds, and instead of holding you back, they will propel you forward. They were meant for your harm but he knows how to turn them around and use them to your advantage. You may be facing a situation where you don't see how it could work out. In your health, your finances, a relationship, every voice says, there's no way, it's too late, the obstacles are too big. God is saying, you're still going to get there. I'm still on the throne, I'm working behind the scenes, I'm fighting your battles, I'm arranging the breaks you need. I'm lining up the right people. When it's all said and done, what God promised will come to pass. You're still going to get well. You're still going to meet the right person. You're still going to break that addiction. You're still going to accomplish your dreams. Where you are is not an accident. God may not have sent the storm, but he is in control of the storm. Here's the test. Will you trust him? when you don't see any sign of things improving? Will you stay in faith when every thought tells you it's never going to work out? This is what the Apostle Paul did. He was a prisoner on a boat headed to Rome. He'd been arrested in Jerusalem for causing a disturbance. Even though he was found not guilty, he had appealed to Caesar. And while they were sailing on this several month journey, 276 people on board, they encountered a huge storm with hurricane force winds. The waves were so big, they were battering the boat back and forth. For 14 days, they didn't see the sun nor the stars. The boat was so beat up, it was taking on water. The crew started throwing cargo and supplies overboard. They were despondent. They had quit eating. The scripture says all hope of them being saved was gone. 
But in the middle of the storm, an angel appeared to Paul. He said in Acts 27, Don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand before Caesar. And God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. Paul had this promise that he would make it to Rome. But all the circumstances said he would never get there. Everywhere he looked, the winds, the waves, the crew, said he wasn't going to make it. He could have thought, God, I must have heard you wrong. You said I would stand before Caesar, but I'm in a sinking boat in the middle of the ocean, stuck in a hurricane. Sometimes what God promises looks just the opposite of what we see. God, you said I was going to get well. All I see is sickness. You said I would lend and not borrow, but I see debt, lack, struggle. You said my children would be mighty in the land, but I see addictions, compromise. Here's the key. You can't be moved by what you see. You have to be moved by what you know. Don't let that storm talk you out of what God promised. In the middle of the storm, when it looked impossible, no sign of things improving, Paul went up to the crew and said, it's going to be all right. Get something to eat. God promised that I would not only stand before Caesar, but that all of your lives would be spared. The next verse is the key. He said, and I believe it will be just as God said. See, God can make all these promises, but if we don't take the next step and say like Paul, God, I believe what you promised me will come to pass, then the promises won't do any good. We have to mix faith with them. When Paul told the crew that their lives were going to be spared, no doubt waves were splashing him in the face. Wind so strong, almost knocking him down, had to hold on to the boat. It had been this way for two weeks. He could have been depressed like the rest of them, complaining. Instead, he was talking about what God promised. He was speaking life in the face of death. He was talking victory in the middle of defeat. What you're saying in the storm will have a great impact on whether you stay there or whether you come out. If you're saying, I'll never get well, I can't break this addiction, I've had it since high school. Joel, these people that did me wrong, this injustice, it ruined my life. If you talk defeat, you're going to have defeat. If you think I'll never get out of this trouble, then you never will. In the middle of the storm, you need to declare what God promised you. I am coming out. This too shall pass. I am not moved by the waves, the winds, the opposition. I know God being for me is more than the world being against me. I will get well. I will prosper and succeed. My children will serve the Lord. Get in agreement with God. The angel said, Paul, everyone sailing with you will be saved. Here Paul was a prisoner on the boat. He didn't have any influence there. The crew saw him as secondary, just another inmate we have to transport. They thought Paul was sailing with them. But notice how God sees you. He said, Paul, everyone sailing with you will be saved. You may have some enemies, people that look down on you. They think they have the upper hand. Don't worry. You're not sailing with them. They're sailing with you. Nothing can snatch you out of God's hand. You may feel like you're on the boat of the opposition, like you're at a disadvantage at work, at school, but people don't determine